For tens of thousands of years, the sound of gray wolves filled the vast North American continent. In California and elsewhere, wolves were ecosystem engineers. Their presence actually shaped the land. Elk and deer would avoid the places where they could be easily hunted. And this allowed young plants and trees to grow into healthy groves, which in turn provided habitat and nutrients for beavers, fish, birds, insects, and more. Without wolves, elk and deer tend to overgraze plants, and species diversity declines. When Euro-American settlers first moved into the West, they found much of the landscape ideal for livestock ranching. But wolves threatened livestock, so these new settlers killed wolves, at first incrementally and then systematically, until they were entirely eliminated from the American West. In the 1990s, scientists moved 66 wolves from Canada into Yellowstone National Park and part of Idaho. That population has since grown to 2,000 wolves and has supported a kind of passive ecosystem restoration in the region. Last summer, a pair of Oregon wolves took up residence in California, had a few pups, and became the state's first wolf pack in a century. That pack soon killed two local cows. Such conflicts between wolves and livestock are politically controversial and costly. And if they become a regular problem in California, then the state may be forced to kill wolves and prevent their population growth. But there are things we can do to reduce conflicts and mitigate the controversy. So to work towards a solution, my team and I first predicted where suitable wolf habitat in California exists based on environmental variables. I then applied this wolf habitat map to another map of livestock grazing land in the state to produce what you see here. Areas in dark orange are conflict hotspots where we should implement practices that reduce the likelihood of conflicts. And what can actually be done? Well, a variety of cost-effective conflict reduction practices exist, but to be successful, they must be adapted to local conditions. So my team and I met with and surveyed 120 livestock producers in these hotspot regions to find out which practices may be most feasible for their unique operations. Together, they reported that the best local solutions would be one, the removal from their land of wolf attractants like livestock carcasses and bone piles, and two, the use of range riders to deter wolves and monitor pack locations. We're now working with stakeholders around the state to try to get ahead of this issue. This would be active, anticipatory management, meant to keep wild wolves separate from human property. Because good fences make good neighbors. And if we can achieve a stable coexistence with this native animal, then California will once more echo with their sounds. Thank you.